to let you guys know right now, this is not an RGT85 video or RGT85 making this video. This is Sean, the person behind the moniker. Not to say that there's really many differences between the two. I pretty much am who I am, but there's not going to be catchphrases in here. I'm not going to try to edit this fancy or whatever. This is all off the cuff, very raw, very real, which a lot of my videos are. But this one more so because I cannot believe that this situation is actually a situation. This was brought to my attention by my buddy 8-Bit Eric, who actually made a video on this topic. It'll be listed in the description box down below. But Eric told me about this a couple of days ago, and he was like, hey, did you hear so-and-so is trying to deplatform you? And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? And then he never followed up on it. So I thought he was just trolling me in it because of the whole, you know, sweet baby ink thing. And I was kind of outspoken about it. I kind of went a bit against the grain that journalists were going against. But now I fully believe that there is like a video game cabal and like they have a list of people that they don't like and people that they want sort of out of this industry and they don't want talking about certain topics because this story blew my freaking mind that this is an actual thing. So I'm not going to talk about the Sweet Baby Ink stuff because honestly, I don't care right now about that. You know, it is what it is. I've said what I've said. I've moved on from it. I'm not someone who tries to harbor on stuff or whatever. The only reason that people are still talking about this is because the video game industry itself keeps talking about this. Meanwhile, they forget that the whole reason that Sweet Baby Inc. got put under a lens was because their employees were trying to take down a list of their games on Steam that someone created. That's why this whole thing started. And every story that talks about this seems to forget that little detail, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the fallout from this. Obviously, Kotaku made an article on it. I thought it was a ridiculous article, like a lot of people did. Some people rocked with it, some people didn't. Hey, that's what's cool about the internet. You don't have to agree with every single person. Now, the author of this article blocked me on Twitter because I made a joke or two. And it's funny because when she made the article, I looked at her Twitter later on in the day and she was like, oh, I'm having such a good time making these people mad at me. Buy me a drink. Here's my cash app. And then she privated her, her account because I guess she couldn't handle the heat. It's like, can you handle the heat or you can't handle the heat? But I basically responded to her um, making a, a silly tweet, in my opinion, that um, I'm going to bring up right now. Like I said, very raw, very real, very uncut. And this was the situation. This is what actually got me blocked. If you aren't sure this is a harassment campaign, take a look at the content. Look at how many sock puppet accounts flock to comments on posts. Look at the language in those comments. Look at the images they're sharing, the way they're manipulating pictures of women. And then I shared this little gif of attention. I am a victim because in my mind, that's what she's trying to, you know, she's making it about herself. It's not about the story. It's not about the sweet baby ink people. It's now about me because I said that this wasn't a problem when in actuality, there is actual proof of this being an issue. Once again, I want to remind you, I want to remind you that this whole thing started because sweet baby ink employees tried to take down a list of their games that was put up on steam. They tried to false flag this. So harassment started with them but that's okay because you know they're they're in the right in this situation and they're holier than thou but here's where things get ridiculous you want to block me cool that's fine i don't care i've been blocked by a ton of people but when people start chiming in and then i look into who these people are it, it gets it gets a lot more interesting so this person mike diver made a tweet on march 12th saying i know a lot of folk in retro gaming circles follow this guy but maybe you you maybe you want to not follow him actually posting this sort of thing says everything about the kind of audience he wants and you're better than that and the girl from kotaku retweeted this so they're trying this dude is trying to say hey don't rock with this guy don't follow this guy he's a bad person and he's trying to get a certain audience a certain audience bro i have probably one of the most diverse audiences on this platform okay whether you're talking about race, okay, maybe not sex, but whether you're talking about race, whether you're talking about gender, whether you're talking about sexual preference or whatever, bro, I probably have the most diverse thing. I have people in my inbox of all of all different walks of life. I, there's there's this one trans girl who messages me all the time, and I don't know why, but we talk all the time. She's a nice person. Her name's Roxanne. Like, what does this have to do with with my audience? 
I'm simply posting that this person wants to be a victim in this situation because obviously they do. They want to make this situation about them. Is it about Sweet Baby Ink or is it about you and your feelings that supposedly you don't have for this situation because you're big, you're bad, you're strong. But then when people actually start saying, hey, you know what, this is kind of BS, you, you, you back down. You back down. But Mr. Diver, oh, he's a holy diver. He doesn't stop there. So then he goes on to say that I put up in this tweet here. In case you missed it, this is another harassment campaign directed primarily at women in the games business. The signs were there days ago, but now it's clear as day. Obviously, you follow who you like. It's just disappointing to see people who have been around games long enough to surely know how things work put their flag down amongst idiots who have no idea. Do you know who this Mike Diver got? For, before we get into that, before we get into that, it's targeting women in gaming. I do a podcast with a woman twice a week. It'll be once a week if uh, we get 500 uh, uh, Patreon backers over on SpawnCastNetwork.com. One of my good friends in the industry is Celia from Yacht Club Games. I've known her for, fuck, four years now. We talk pretty much every day. I know her cats, rituals, and stuff like that. She's a pretty high up person in the games industry. We still talk every day. She's friends with people. She's friends with the Kotaku girl. That's f I don't care. I have a differentiating opinion than her friend does. What the, what what does that mean about anything? You you have to like the same people that your friends like. You have to you have to be in the same circle as the people in your friends are. You can't have any outsiders in here. Once again, this is kindergarten shit. Who raised you people? Who raised you people? And once again, I have to bring it back. This has nothing to do with men, women, uh, gay people, trans people. Nothing. It has nothing to do with any of that. It has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with anything. It has to do with a company that tried to harass a person for making a list. But I want to bring you back to this first tweet. I want to bring you back to this first tweet here. Because Mike Diver does web things at PlayStation. He also makes books. He likes Saints FC. He's a robot liker. And he has his pronouns in there. Fine. Cool with me. Web things at PlayStation. That kind of got me thinking. Well, does this person like make PlayStation content or is this person employed by PlayStation? They're employed by PlayStation. They're actually a, a public relations person for PlayStation. Let me bring this back up here. I know a lot of folk in retro game circles follow this guy, but maybe you want to not follow him. Actually posting this sort of thing says everything about the kind of audience he wants. And you're better than that. Mike, you're, you're not better than me in, in any metric. I don't know you, but to do something like this while working at PlayStation, trying to tell, encourage people that they're, that they're bad people for following me and that they should unfollow me, trying to de-platform me because you're friends with Alyssa. First and foremost, what did I say about the video games journalism thing? That it's a cabal, that there's a bunch of people in here and they're all tight knit and they all suck the teat of the industry. That's why you got people like Greg Miller showing up in Spider-Man games and stuff like that. This person is a PR person, a PlayStation who's friends with a journalist. Seems like a bit of conflict of interest, but I digress. You know, it could just be strictly a friendship thing. But to say that you want to sort of de-platform me and not have people follow me and not have people rock with me and to have Kotaku come out and say the same thing. Do you understand what that does? Maybe for the average person, you know, it, it makes them think, oh man, you know, I should really, I should really calm down. You know, I, I should be less of a presence online. For me, this, this just fuels me. This just fuels me because if I'm, if, if, if I'm making the, the traditional video game industry people a little bit uncomfortable at times, that means I'm doing something right. That means something is right about what I am saying. Look, I have been wrong about a million things in the world. And I have been, you know, corrected by people. I've had people make hate videos about me for literally years. Did I attack all of them? Did I say you deplatform these people? Did I try to take these people down? No. Type in RGT85 into YouTube. There will be tons of videos about me, tons of videos bashing me, and it's fine. It's someone else's opinion on a subject. Nothing I said was malicious. Nothing I said was was based on the someone's sex or race or or creed or religion or sexual preference. Nothing had anything to do with that. It was a simple joking tweet. And for that, 
I should be deplatformed. Don't follow me. If you don't think, if you don't think this industry needs an enema, I don't know what to tell you. Because it's not just the journalists. It's not just the game companies. It's not just outside forces and companies that are brought in to, to you know, culture enrich a game that sort of goes against the story. It has nothing to do with that. What it has to do with is power and control. And when you have these three entities all working together in harmony, you know, they try to make they try to make me a victim. I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim of anything. If anything, I gained more Twitter followers because of this. Because they thought the joke was funny. I'm not a victim of anything. All you're trying to do is silence me. And when someone does that, it, it just it doesn't work. Because I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to bring this up. And I'm not going to make daily videos on this or anything. I really don't. Unless there's a substantial update, I really don't care. I actually replied to Mike's tweet and said, thank you. Unfollowed and blocked. Or, or something. I said, like, thanks, Mike. I'm blocked. and Or I blocked him and unfollowed him. Like, Jesus Christ. The internet has made society just a ridiculous place. A ridiculous place. Where if you disagree with someone, all of a sudden you're enemies. You're bad people. You're, you're, uh, you're the antichrist. And like, look, I'm the type of person real recognize real. And a lot of these folks are looking unfamiliar.